This is the last part of talking out of this mini series. Next time we're gonna see sparks, we're gonna see settings, we're gonna see how to dial stuff in. So this is now taking a look at the front panel of the machine, seeing what it does or what it doesn't do, how synergic the synergic machine is, and how manual the manual pulse is, and what this all really means and what it does and does not do for you. Now, let's take a quick look at this machine. So we have our menu bar on the we have our menu bar on the bottom here. Let's start in standard MIG. So standard MIG, the way how the way how Everlast has designed this is you have your voltage here, which you can adjust all the way up to 30. Then here you have your wire speed from 60 inches a minute to 600 inches a minute. This is what I would consider a classic MIG machine. Nothing fancy, nothing... This is what you do, you adjust your speed, you pull the trigger, the machine welds. Now the next program is called a Synergic MIG program. In the Synergic program, we have a few things that are a little bit different. This here still displays you voltage. It says volts right here. Where this one here now displays amperage, not inches a minute anymore. So it goes down from 30 amps all the way up to 275 amps. The wire feed rate that this machine is actually welding at is not really something you can see. It's something that's in the machine, hidden in the machine and the software. And um, it's something that's hidden in the software and you dial your amperage in and the machine displays you a voltage and you can weld. Now, in order to do this, you need to know what material you're welding. For example, steel. That's your material, that's the wire you put in, like a regular ER70S6 wire. See the synergic light is on. Your wire diameter, are you using 023 wire? Are you using 030 wire? Are you using 035? Or are you using 045? As you can see, when you flip through these, my voltage stays the same and my amperage stays the same. So I can imagine that here is the highest wire speed in the machine, but I don't know how high it is. Then the feed rate drops a little bit, the feed rate drops a little bit more, and the feed rate drops a little bit more to get to these settings. Now, down here you can adjust a pre and a post flow. You can turn pre and post flow off and you can test your gas. Now if you want to weld stainless, you have to click on the stainless button. If you want to weld aluminum, you click on the aluminum button. Now, what, what catches my eye here is that it says aluminum 4043 slash 5356. Those two wires are not really anything alike. There's a difference of about two to three volts in the synergic curve. So I'm wondering, is that a setting for 4043 or is that a setting for 5356? Or is that somewhere in between one size fits no one? I mean, I guess on the 80 amps to adjust the voltage, you can always go a little bit lower or a little bit higher. Your wire speed and your amperage stays the same and you can make up for these adjustments. But this is an adjustment that you have to find. Now, if you want to use uh, different diameters, let's say stainless steel, you can do 023, 030, 035. If you go into aluminum, it bumped me to 045. And if I click on this button, it's on 045. So really the synergic settings on aluminum are only good for 045 wire, a basically unspecified kind of aluminum. Now, if we go to the pulse mode, because that's where it's at, pulse, everybody rants and rave, rants and raves about pulse. If we go into pulse mode, oh, the synergic light just came off. And here it 
it says 320 so for sure that's not our amperage that's our wire feed in inches per minute so at this point and this is on make now let's try this on the spool gun same thing let's try this on the push pull gun same thing no synergic settings so if we go here not only it is a full manual pulse but now also your wire feed and your voltage are full manual you adjust your voltage here and you see your wire speed is not affected then you adjust your wire speed here and your voltage is not affected and then you have your base voltage then you have your frequency and you have your pulse on time and um, that's basically that's basically where it's at for this machine where you make one adjustment to any one of those one two three four five values and it affects down the road not just down the road it affects immediately all the settings some more some less so if you change just one number you may have to come back and tweak three or four others and as you tweak those others are affected so I spent about 20 hours with this machine I believe that I have an okay knowledge about pulse MIG welding and after more than 10 hours I was finally able to get this machine dialed in to where I was getting acceptable results however those results that I got were hard to achieve and they really were not as good as other machines that I own that I use why because it's a single pulse machine it's not a double pulse machine but I mean I knew this before I bought this also on your on your sheet where they tell you something about hot start the hot start really here is a stick hot start it's not a hot start for the aluminum and also it does not have any sort of slope down or crater fill function or anything else when you terminate the weld um, more likely you are left with a big crater and sometimes cracking originating out of that crater depending on what wire you're using so now that we know all this and we're gonna digest all this in the next video I'm actually gonna put some wire in the machine and see what I can make it do see how I can make it run and and how the welds will look like when when I'm done